All right, by popular demand, because I cannot possibly receive the volume of requests via DM and email to cover a story and then not cover it, people have been sending me a link from an interview that is on Rumble. It's from something called The Stu Peters Show. Now, I don't know who Stu Peters is, so I am not passing judgment, and there is no but to that. I've watched the interview. It's with someone named Patrick King coming out of Red Deer, Alberta. People are sharing this around as though it is the incontrovertible proof that COVID was a hoax, that Alberta is lifting all of its COVID measures, that it basically is admitting that it never had any evidence of the existence of COVID, so on and so forth. But breaking out of Alberta today, mandatory masking is coming to an end. Kids will not be masking when they return to school. Mandatory quarantine will be ending contract, uh, contact tracing, testing for mild symptoms. It's all done. They will now be recognizing COVID as a mild flu and treating it as such. Freedom has won in Alberta, proving that fighting does work. Joining us now is Patrick King, a devoted father of two, a proud Canadian. I've watched the interview. That is not exactly the conclusion that anyone should be coming to after having seen this interview. There are some elements of truth in that Alberta is lifting a lot of the COVID restrictions that it had in place for a long time now. The chief medical officer of Alberta, Dina Hinshaw, is in fact saying that Alberta is going to start treating COVID more like other respiratory illnesses. To go from there to say that the government of Alberta has admitted they never had any evidence as to the existence of COVID, we're not quite there yet. Now, for those of you who don't know the story, Patrick King, Red Deer, Alberta, has been protesting the COVID measures from what he said in the interview for 200 straight weeks. I don't know that that actually makes sense because I don't think this has been around for 200 weeks, but whatever, maybe I got that wrong. So we've held rallies on our streets with, the, with regards to oil and gas and these, this government that we have for over three and a half years. And on December 5th, we were celebrating our, um, our 200th week of being on the corner on a Saturday morning protesting. And on that particular day, COVID um, mandates were implemented and, and, and they were going on for the last little while. And I was obviously targeted because of my voice. And I know this and it's in the transcripts in the court. Um, I was targeted and, and I received a ticket of $1,200. He says that this made him a target for the government because he's been a vocal critic of the COVID measures, COVID restrictions. And at one point, this culminated in him getting a $1,200 ticket for violating the ordinances, the edicts that have been issued under the Public Health Act. He decided to contest the $1,200 ticket. And in the context of that contestation, he's representing himself, pro se litigant, self-represented litigant, depending on how you qualify the term in your jurisdiction. He's representing himself. And what he said basically is that in the context of the contestation, above and beyond delays that happen all the time in court, the judge at one point apparently advised him uh, that he could subpoena the chief medical officer, if that's her title, Dina Hinshaw of Alberta. And he did, in fact, issue a subpoena asking for certain information and asking for evidence proof of isolation of COVID SARS, the illness. I mean, I don't know what he means by COVID in isolation and not in a lab setting. Um, you know, he in the interview talks about isolation. He talks about PCR. He talks about um, cycle testing. And I get told as a self-representative, I can... The, the judge has to advocate for me and steer me in the right direction, at which time she allowed me to subpoena Dina Hinshaw, who is our chief medical officer of health for Alberta, who basically what my defense was to be was I needed proof that you have isolated the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And that, therefore, the science would give you the backing for your public health act. Which in plain and have. simple terms means prove to me that a pandemic exists. Prove to me that we're all going to die. Prove to me that this thing is raging out of control and that people are dying from this thing. 100%. And if they did that, then I would be no problem. I would say, okay, you're right. You've got this. I'll put this mask on. But bottom line, he issued a subpoena, a purported apparent subpoena to Dina Hinshaw. Uh, the response that he got from Dina Hinshaw and the government was that we don't have the documentation that you have requested in the subpoena, which Patrick King is taking to qualify as an admission that the government does not have any evidence or does not have the requested information in the subpoena. For anybody who has practiced law and knows a bit about this. Now, I, I am certified to practice only in Quebec and not in Alberta. I don't know what the procedure is there, but there is certain 
uh, general rules that apply to subpoenas, and they have to be validly issued in order to be binding on the person on whom the subpoena is served. Served basically means here is the document in legal court recognized format uh, and, and method of delivery. A subpoena is an order of the court to appear or to produce documents. So basically the subpoena, when properly issued and properly served, is tantamount equal to an order of the court enjoining a witness to appear for examination, for deposition, for questioning, and to produce, bring with certain documents. That's called a subpoena duces tecum, a subpoena bring with you certain documents. For anybody who's watched the interview with Patrick King and Stu Peters, you will notice at one point uh, Patrick, I hope I'm getting his name right, but basically the guy giving the interview says, uh, uh, the judge told me that I could issue a subpoena, but didn't tell me the right way to do it. And I issued a subpoena that was signed by an officer of the court when the subpoena had to be signed by a judge. They got me on a judicial, what's called a jurisdictional challenge, which the judge advocated for me to subpoena Dina Hinshaw because she has to. But what she didn't do was tell me the appropriate direction to go to. So I used the justice of the peace who signed the uh, the subpoena, well, it's a judge who needs to sign the subpoena, not a justice of the peace. So they got me on the jurisdictional challenge, but they also violated my rights in doing so. Now, knowing this piece of information, I can reasonably come to the conclusion that the subpoena was not validly issued. And so Dina Hinshaw says, thanks for this invalid subpoena because it was not issued by the court properly. I don't have to abide by it. It's not compelling on me. It is not uh, sanctionable in the event that I don't abide by this subpoena because it was not validly issued. It was not a valid subpoena in the first place. Where people are really drawing some inferences to this is that the Crown apparently announced its intention to drop the ticket against King. And people are saying, you know, this in conjunction with the admission that they do not have the documents requested in the subpoena, you know, is a, is a wholehearted victory for this individual. It proves everything anyone's been saying about COVID. Not so much. The Crown drops tickets all the time. They drop these types of infractions all the time. Uh, in fact, for anybody who knows, if you contest these tickets, more often than not, or at the very least, oftentimes, the court will just drop the charges. Not the court, the Crown will drop the charges because it's too much of a pain in the neck to pursue them. And this illustrates part of the problem of the issuance of these infractions in the first place. For anybody who knows, and I've had discussions with people who are on the inside of the issuing of these tickets, it's not necessarily profiling, but there is a strategy of issuing these tickets to individuals who seem likely to pay them without contesting them. So call it profiling in the sense that the police, the authorities tend to issue these tickets to people who they do not think are going to contest them because it's not worth the Crown's time to go to court and argue these tickets out because by and large, they have been issued as alleged infractions to violations of health orders that were never passed in any sort of meaningful legislative manner. They were issued under the Emergency Health Act or the Public Health Act of whatever jurisdiction they're in. So it's arguable whether or not they're enforceable in the first place. A lot of people have been contesting them and a lot of them have been getting dropped where the Crown basically says, we don't want to pursue it anymore. Good, enjoy your victory. We're going to go collect from someone else who's more susceptible to pay without questioning. And this happened in a lot of cases. The Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms was involved in a case with uh, the pastor who was jailed and the Crown dropped all but one of the charges. So it happens all the time, and it's not an admission that the Crown is saying, we have no evidence whatsoever. And in this case, in particular, the Crown dropping the charges is no more than that. It happens all the time. The Crown saying, we don't have the information requested in your subpoena, or we're not providing it, we're not communicating it. From the sounds of it, they're probably saying that because they do not have to produce it, because the subpoena was invalid in the first place, and Dina Hinshaw, the Crown, knows They've gotten served with an invalid subpoena. They do not need to comply with it. So some of what is being said and described in the story is true. Alberta is lifting the measures. Dina Hinshaw is now publicly stating that they're going to treat COVID more like any other respiratory illness. Uh, the Crown dropped the charge against this guy, and they might have said in the court that they don't have the information, they don't have the documents requested in the subpoena, whether or not that's because they didn't bring it because they didn't have to, or it's an admission that they never had it in the first place, that is where we cross the line from what the evidence shows to what some people might say the evidence says, even though it might not say quite that. 
So that is the breakdown. I hope it will allow people to understand what is going on in that story. It is very interesting. Alberta's not the only province to be lifting the measures. I'm in New Brunswick right now. New Brunswick has lifted the measures. There no, there's no more face masks indoors. Uh, there's no more checkpoint at the border from what I'm told, but that does not mean that I'm any less angry about the checkpoint that I had to go through to get here. But a number of the provinces are lifting the measures. Yes, it is probably because of some political pressure. It's also probably because of vaccination status. It's also probably because of the numbers where they are, where they have been for a while, which could arguably not justify the measures that had continued to be in place. But it does not necessarily prove everything that this ind individual is saying in the Stu Peters interview. And it's better that most people truly understand that. Now, with that said, I am starting to sweat. And if you like my videos and you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you've watched until now and you're not subscribed and you haven't hit the notification bell, I don't know what I can do, but uh, if you like this, just be sure to share it around so people can learn. If you want to support the channel, support links are in the pinned comment. Robert Barnes and I, everybody knows, do weekly live streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. If you want to support us, you can find us on Locals at vivabarneslaw.locals.com. And with that said, um, I better turn on the air conditioning because I am starting to sweat like an animal that sweats. Peace.